Hello and welcome to IBM TV. Today I'm joined by Marwan Al Habal, Product Manager at Matrox. Marwan, welcome to IBM TV. Thank you. Can you start by telling us a little bit about Matrox? Yes, uh, Matrox is headquartered in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. We were founded in 1976, so we're quite happy to celebrate 40 years this year. Matrox has uh, specialized since the early days in uh, processing media, displaying media from the f very first computers onto where we are uh, today in cloud-based environments and high-end workstations and servers and so forth. Hey, you recently added the M264S2 and M264S3 cards to your family of products. Can you tell us a bit about them, please? Absolutely. We, we launched our M264 family at uh, IBC last year. The M264 is a generic H.264 computational device. It's, it's meant to be used anywhere in the broadcast chain, from contribution through production all the way through distribution. Uh, it's a 10-bit 422 uh, codec that goes up to 4K P60. So what, with our S2 and S3, what we did is we doubled and tripled the capacity. And our main focus was 4K production servers. So as you uh, very well know, 4K is big. Everybody's talking about 4K. Everybody wants to broadcast 4K. And uh, working with uh, 4K mezzanine codecs is, is very difficult. And the M264, S2, and S3 allows the multi-channel 4K XAVC workflows in, uh, PC, uh, in uh, PC environments. So this is on the production front. On the contribution front, we're, uh, we're focusing on very high-dense um, H.264 10-bit 422 encoding of multiple channels from all the way from 10 streams all the way up to 30 streams within one card. So these cards are meant to go into PC platforms mm -hmm. to make them into dedicated broadcast equipment. On the dis distribution front, that's where the really high density kicks in and we're looking at uh, people wanting to generate lots of different versions of the same media for many different uh, devices. And that's where the really high density encoding is mostly required. And uh, with that, we're looking at extreme density of up to 48 streams of encoding in 420 profiles to distribute the same content to different mobile devices, mm -hmm. different web uh, destinations, and so forth. So, Marwan, as both quality and volume of content increases. What are some of the challenges that people may face with encoding and decoding, and what are Matrox doing to uh, get around that? So, in terms of quality and, and quantity, we see on the, on the quality side, we see a huge increase in pixels. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants more pixels and wants better pixels. So, the challenge becomes handling more pixels, better pixels, more information, and compressing it down to size to allow allow manageable workflows. Mm -hmm. So that's on the 4K front, for example, at 60 frames per second with the HDR. It is extremely difficult to handle these workflows. We, we've, we've, we've mastered those production workflows in HD. Um, 4K P60 adds eight times that challenge. Okay. And people expect to have the exact same workflows, the exact same fluidity of doing multi-channels, uh, of moving data around as if it, if it were HD at eight times the uh, aggregate bandwidth. So that, that, that brings a, a challenge that is not possible today with the, with the current PC platforms that uh, uh, dominate the, the production uh, workflows. And then at the same time, we're looking at an immense increase of different destinations where this 4K content that was originally mastered, um, finding, its, uh, finding its way all over uh, in smaller resolutions, at lower bit rates, uh, with uh, different, uh, repurposed with different graphics, with different uh, watermark, and all of that makes that the original content, it just explodes in terms of destinations that it has to go to. And that's where uh, a, a device like an M264, S2, or S3, allows you to work either at the extreme high, high, high resolution, high quality front, or on the other side, 
where many different destinations of the same content is required. Okay, how important is it for you to ensure you provide a range of products at different price ranges? So the, the M264 ca family has the M264, the S2 and the S3, allowing double and triple the performance. Now, uh, these really are, are, are focused on, on people who are looking at for multi-channel capability, multi-channel XAVC encoding, decoding with the same platform, and that's, that's, where, the, that's where, the, where the S2 and the S3 uh, come from. Uh, the M264 could be used for XAVC, but it, it, it also allows people just to do uh, plain H.264, uh, 422, 10-bit encoding of up to 10 streams. So, so it allows uh, a wide variety of applications to run on the whole family, all within uh, a small power budget for PC platforms. Okay, so you're celebrating your 40th uh, anniversary this year. Yes. What's on the horizon? What's the future for Matrox? Matrox has been always on the cutting edge of uh, technology. We, we've been um, um, always looking at the latest trends of how, what pain points people have and how we can solve them. Mm -hmm. And the next pain points that are on the horizon is the, is the transition of uh, SDI to IP. And we're at the forefront of that and we're working closely with the industry alliances to help a, a smooth uh, transition mm -hmm. for the whole for the whole bro broadcast market, and we are uh, we're providing also we're we're helping enable the transition to completely virtualized infrastructures, allowing people to focus more on opex and mm -hmm. capex, which uh, broadcasters are are demanding these days. So we see those as challenges that are uh, that are coming up in the market, and we are uh, we're investing heavily in in in, in solutions to enable these technologies. Okay, Marwan, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time, Ben. So, 40 years and still going strong. You can find out more at matrox.com forward slash video.